You're listening to Travel Nursing and Allied Life, hosted by Travel. Hey, Nomads. My name is Dylan Callier, and I am a traveling physical therapist best known for the New Medical Nomads podcast. I'm sitting down with TrapCon speakers to give you a sneak peek into what they'll be talking about at the conference this year. My next guest has been an RN for over 30 years and developed health education and diabetes programs in Spanish for local hospitals, as well as serving as faculty and professor of nursing at local colleges. She has also worked with International Service Learning, which takes nurses to Central and South America, offering medical clinics to rural communities. As a freelance speaker, she has earned the Educator of Excellence Award and has been invited an invited keynote speaker for nursing school graduations, career fairs, webinars, and genealogy seminars. She has also developed and written numerous nursing courses and authored her book on genealogy, as well as three children's books. We are very lucky to have her as a returning TrapCon speaker. Her next sessions, one, Monier in Medicine, two, Side Hustles for Healthcare Professionals, and three, the ever-popular additional conference offer, Medical Spanish Intensive, are coming up this September 26th to 29th, 2021 in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Tracy Long. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, a couple of things. You guys are coming to my backyard. Oh. That means I live in Las Vegas. How crazy is that? Like, who, who lives in Las Vegas? I do. <laughs> now, did you grow up in Las Vegas or no, is that a, I are you didn't. a transplant? I grew up in beautiful, sunny California, Northern mm -hmm. California, and then actually ended up doing my undergraduate nursing uh, degree in and braved the cold in Provo, Utah, mm -hmm. and fell in love with a guy in college from Viva Las Vegas. So that's what landed me here. Okay. And I thought, who lives in Vegas? Well, mm -hmm. there's a very vibrant community and some amazing and fantastic people. It's really like any other cosmopolitan city. Once you have your own little circle and radius mm -hmm. of places you go, it's like any other. We just happen to be the entertainment capital of the world, <laughs> and we happen to have what's called the Strip. And so the conference is going to be in one of the fabulous hotels on the Strip. Mm -hmm. But I hope that you actually, in making your travel plans, might plan to spend some time in one of our other venues of recreation, including Red Rock or Lake Mead, checking out Hoover Dam, to go outside and beyond the Las Vegas Casino Strip and see some of the other beauties of the desert. That Absolutely. Yeah. I think um, for those who are listening that it will be their first time at TravCon, we have a lot of returning um, people that always come back to TravCon. You know, it's your TravCon family. Got to come back. Um, but for those new, there is the tourism side of Las Vegas where everybody goes to hang out. And then there's the local piece of Las Vegas where everybody goes to hang out. And they're both very fun and have their own kind of pros and cons and experiences with them. But absolutely, we do have um, some groups that do hikes um, in the local area as well. And, um, you know, I don't know, I, I always pictured a desert in my mind before I got out of, you know, central Missouri and started traveling. And um, it's actually pretty beautiful uh, once you get out into it. It is. And it took me a couple of years to see the beauty in the desert because I was from Northern California, beautiful, green, green, green. And so uh, it took me a while. But now I see the beauty in the desert and I invite you to come join us as well and see something beyond the neon. So you can even uh, download a la an app on Trails of Las Vegas. Mm. And it's literally another app called Beyond the Neon, I want to say, that has bike trails hiking trails stuff like that so Got it. um there's plenty to do here in vegas <laughs> i love that term um this is super nerdy but there was um a book i was reading it was like the top five inventions that impacted the you know humanity or humankind and um one of them was talking about light and there was a very very big chunk on that book about the introduction of neon lights and how it happened to come around the same time that las vegas was being formed um, and so it was this whole history of, you know, the, the gangsters getting pushed out of Southern California and then this neon light was coming up and then they became this, you know, iconic place in the U.S. Uh, but yeah, neon is very um, integrated into the history of Las Vegas. Yeah. And the next level up is actually LED lights. Mm. So that has transformed the face of the Las Vegas Strip. 
be on neon. So LED lights are now um, literally transformed the big billboards to become huge TV screens okay. all up and down the strip. Uh -huh. So it can be stimulation overload. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that's why you might want to do something also like the calming meditative hiking something like mm, that. Mm -hmm. And that's after you have filled your cup with goodness from all the information you're going to get from TravCon 2021. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Cause the energy in that conference <laughs> is really fun. Oh. There's just kindred spirits who are there and want to share their travel experiences with you. In addition to the speakers that you're going to be gleaning good from, in addition to the exhibit hall is Fun, fun, fun. And so it's all good. Yeah, absolutely. I always tell people it's it's the only time I've ever felt like royalty because you go there and you meet all these other travelers and they're so interested in what you're doing and where you're going. And, um, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, when I joined, like, I thought it was a solo guys game. And then I get into it. I'm starting to meet all these solo females. And then I start meeting all these travel couples and then I start meeting these travel families and, oh, they're in a van and, oh, they're in an RV and, oh, there's a civilian contracting thing. So they're not even in the U.S. anymore. And you start finding about all these things and everybody's wanting to know what your story is as well. And then you get to the exhibit hall and obviously all the staffing agencies are like, you know, wanting to wine and dine you and things like that. And it's a very unique experience that I haven't had anywhere else. So it is absolutely That's my favorite. Good. Well, well deserved yeah. then. I'm glad you felt like royalty as you should. <laughs> so Tracy, you are a very, very high up um, in the caliber of education and everything that you do, um, especially listening to your intro. How did you get involved with TravCon? Ooh, uh, hmm, that's a good question and a very generous compliment uh, because I'm just me, but I definitely love education and I absolutely love nurses and healthcare workers. And so it's nice to put those together. And um, let's see, how did I discover? I can't remember because it's been so many years. <laughs> um, You're definitely one of, you know, we have our um, return VIP um session holders and you are definitely definitely on there and always um oh, good yeah we have some fun and um and it may have been that some of the founders of the conference and I connected because I live in Las Vegas mm -hmm. and um I may have reached out uh to them to say hey I'm interested in offering a medical Spanish at your conference mm -hmm. and you don't have to pay me to travel to Vegas <laughs> and you don't have to pay for hotel. <laughs> That's the real reason they wanted me. <laughs> and, uh, and then we just had a lot of fun and it's been a really popular course. Yeah. We offer it twice during the conference as mm -hmm. a pre-conference full day, basic medical Spanish. And then we offer it at the end for those who mm -hmm. can't fit it all in and want to stay for those extra days. So yeah, that's been a lot of fun. And um, mm -hmm. speaking of the, the medical intensive that you have, um, for those that might be intimidated coming in, it's, it's very, you know, I've tried learning Spanish. I've gotten so far, um, but with the hours put in and even being, you know, immersed in a Spanish speaking culture, um, it is, it is tough. It is way more challenging than I, I thought going into it. Um, for how do you kind of set up the course um, for those to like kind of come in, you know, learn the biggest bang for their buck. And uh, that way they're not so intimidated when they show up if they're really wanting Good. to pick up the skill. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you could be a beginner beginner or you could be someone who had meta, you know, Spanish in high school, maybe even middle school, maybe a little class in college, and you haven't used it for a while, and we'll brush off the cobwebs. So we start really at the beginning, kind of caveman talk with the basic alphabet, some wonderful concepts called cognates, which means it's the same word in English as it is in Spanish. And here's the thing, people leave that course realizing they know way more Spanish than they thought they knew because you all have already learned a foreign language. Mm. And you might be thinking, uh, no, I haven't. You know, <laughs> what's that? 
medical terminology. And medical terminology is based in Latin, which shares the roots for many, many Spanish words. And so we'll really focus on those medical terms and people leave pretty excited that they feel like I can say stuff. So we start really at the basics and then we add on, you'll get a very pretty thick uh, syllabus with more vocabulary and phrases to keep you busy for a year. So that's the bang for your buck in that we're going to give you a lot of resources and it's not just, I, I'm going to learn how to be fluent in, mm. in you know, se- seven or eight hours because <laughs> that might not happen. But what we will do is give you lots of opportunities to practice some phrases, mm. um, conversational ones that you will use in medicine and then show you resources. And, um, and with that, it's a great little jump start okay. for people to go, okay, I can do this. And now I know how I can even get better. So it's a great intro. Absolutely. That's awesome. Uh, And I wanted to talk a little bit about the excursions that you're doing into these other communities, into, um, you know, rural parts of other countries and using um, Spanish to kind of, you know, go into other countries and help out. Um, How did you get involved with that? And what would be some tips for nurses that are wanting to get into that? Because I feel like, there's two routes and you fit both of them. Some nurses like to jump into travel and use it as a way to take off breaks and go altruistically help out in other countries, communities, um, get out there, do their, their travel trips. And then the other side is to really leverage it and create their own side hustles. And so we'll come to that later. But um, what are some tips that you might have for nurses that are wanting to get out and do those types of excursions? Excellent questions. Well, um, I I love a nurse's heart. And when I say nurses, it's because yes, I'm a nurse, but that really is grouped together with healthcare professionals, because nobody goes into it for the glamour and the celebrity. You go into healthcare because that's the kind of heart you have. And I love that. And so the heart of a healthcare professional is generally altruistic, meaning we want to help people. And so I love watching and being a part of healthcare professionals becoming instruments for good. And I love to combine two of my loves. One of them is nurses and the other one is travel. And so I love putting them together. But the background of that was um, when I was hmm, 24, I guess, I was a volunteer health welfare missionary to Columbia, South America for almost two years, had an amazing experience. I remember thinking, I will be back and I'm going to be back with nurses. Well, finally, I my connected with a company and a partnership that I loved their formula. And so they did all the infrastructure and the logistics. And I would just show up with volunteers. First, it was all my nursing students. And then it became nursing students, pre-nursing students, and pre-medical students. Wow. Um, and then other allied health, pro- allied health professionals, including lab techs. And uh, we can keep everybody busy. And uh, so anyway, I've been to 10, 12 different countries, most of them Central and South America, because I am fluent in Spanish. That's that's my people. That's who I feel like I can really help. And they do have a very real need. Mm -hmm. Many of them are in rural settings, and they have no access to medical care. So um, anyway, with this one particular company, we would uh, have all the logistics put together, we'd show up and just have a lot of fun, we'd work hard and play hard and do a lot of good. But I also took teams to Africa and India and three teams to China. So I'm also trying to learn a little Mandarin, but it's not very bueno. (laughs) So it's a little harder for me. But anyway, um, so that's how it started. And then um, some of those other trips were with different countries. So I'm actually in the process of writing an ebook on how to prepare for an effective and successful medical mission, because there's a lot of moving parts. And it's not just 
find a company and go. There's a lot of preparation in the sense of being emotionally prepared, physically prepared, financially prepared, socially prepared, intellectually prepared. So there's a lot to it to have a successful trip Mm -hmm. and make it effective so that you're really moving the needle on a a real need. And so anyway, I'm hoping it's going to be done by the time we get to the conference. Um, So if you're interested in that, you can sign up for that ebook. Um, So, yeah, Um, then I was hoping to uh, put together some teams for even this summer, which by the conference time will have already happened. So I'm hoping that happens. Mm -hmm. And then I've been working with a couple other organizations to create um, maybe some other uh, either nonprofits that can bring people Um, Mm -hmm. because ultimately you have to match your interests with the right organization. Mm -hmm. There's so many fantastic organizations, but they have different missions, different focuses. And so um, that would be something I would love to develop. And that would be if you could go onto my website and say, here's what my skills are. Here's the countries I'm interested in. Match me. That would be awesome. So I'm working on that. (laughs) That would be quite cool. That would be good. Because I know there's um, just through my own kind of search and bumping in with people involved with certain groups. Um, there's quite a big difference between certain groups and other groups and how well intentioned they are, how effective they are, um, whether or not they're actually creating something sustainable um, once they go in and help and leave that area. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, on the surface, it's, like you said, you know, your heart's in the right place and you're just jumping and you want to help. Um, and then you realize, oh, wow, there's a lot more to this. Yeah. And, you know, and there's on the spectrum, there is the, um, the uh, vocation vacation, and I've done plenty of those. And there's nothing wrong with that, where you go help out for two weeks, and then you go be a tourist for a couple days, nothing wrong with that. Sometimes it feels like we're just putting a bandaid on the problem. And yet, um, I always come away feeling like the biggest impact that probably I personally made was on those group members, those volunteers and having them come away with the big aha and how much that impacts them in their quality of care when they do return. So we may have prescribed some prescriptions and cleared up some UTIs and STIs and things like that. Um, And that's good and meaningful and helpful, but I think the impact is on those volunteers and they'll come back to the states being better, more uh, having more depth to themselves as a, as a healthcare professional, having seen the world through different eyes. Um, and then I've also done um, pretty much almost every trip, I'll do some kind of a research project. And so that's been super fun as well to come up with some really interesting conclusions and data that I, I hope also impact uh, us as healthcare professionals. So as you could tell, I could go on and on and on about that. So. <laughs> that's awesome. It's- just yeah feeding into it your your projects seem to be very um they have a long life to them and so you get into the travel piece you get into the education you have a long lasting effect after you leave and then also you're doing research and these groups that you're bringing along it's it's really inspiring that's really yeah hopefully that'll all keep because those are very longitudinal projects Mm -hmm. and that means i get to live to be a hundred and be healthy (laughs) I think they're yeah they're they're coming they're coming close to that. I think I think it'll be here in the next couple of years for sure. Um, for those um, now for the second piece, those nurses that are thinking about leveraging this travel lifestyle to suit some sort of passion project to turn into a business maybe someday. Um, those side hustles. What would be one key takeaway that you would like clinicians to le- leave knowing after your um, talk on side hustles? Great question. Um, I will define what is a side hustle. What are the characteristics of an entrepreneur? Because you are the boss, you are the CEO, and you are the painter of your portrait on this canvas that we've been given called life. And so we'll first define those. And then literally, I'm going to be listing out 20 plus ideas. And I'll give you lots of examples on what you could do if you wanted to. And so I I liked this topic because many traveling uh, nurses and healthcare professionals often 
Uh, they have the freedom to do what they want, but often they'll have a contract that's canceled and then there goes their budget. And so this gives you something to plan on, to be in control of when sometimes that life might not feel like you're in control. So um, I, I want you as an attendee of that session to go away feeling empowered, like you are the master of your ship and you can choose where to sail it because you'll have opportunities as an, uh, as an entrepreneur and use the skills that you already have, the skills, the knowledge to bless the lives of others. And so you can do that knowing how to structure uh, some type of a little side business side hustle. So that's really the purpose of that session. And, uh, and I have an online course also on how to help you do that. So if you're interested cool. in that. Absolutely. And you, you use the term um, kind of painting your own lifestyle. And I know that was a reference into your other topic as well. And I hopefully I'm not. Ooh, I didn't um, even do that. on. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I'm not butchering um, the <laughs> Nice segment. Name, but Mo, yeah, Mon, Monier and Medicine. Um, Monier. Can you describe where that title comes from? And then also your big takeaway for that one. As awesome. Well. Yeah. It's Monet, Monet. in Medicine um, or Monet and Medicine. And so I love art. Um, um, when I get to travel the world and get to go to art museums, um, I, I look at that from the eyes of a clinician. And so it's also trying to combine two of my loves and my interests. And I find, and I teach my nursing babies, my nursing fundamental students, how to become better clinicians by using the skills we use when we're looking and enjoying art. And so what we're gonna do is show you lots of different art pieces, classic ones that you know, and some that you don't, and teach you the skills of visual acuity. We're also going to be using and identifying skills from, for example, the good master Sherlock Holmes, who identifies something about a person because of all these little clues and cues on them, right? He knows that they work in a coal mine because there was the speck of dust that was on his shoe. And he noticed that recently he was divorced because now there's not a tan or a tan line where the wedding ring used to be, you know, and he puts all these things together, but art does that as well. So we're going to use those mediums to help us become better clinicians because um, we miss stuff. And if we miss information, then people get misdiagnosed. They do not receive adequate and appropriate early treatment, and then things deteriorate. And so the better of a clinician you can be, the more um, helpful we can be to improve patient outcomes. So um, that's really where all that came from. So the big takeaway is that you will become a better clinician, whatever that is, whether you're a nurse, dietitian, respiratory, uh, radiology, whatever that is, by identifying um, clues about people so that you can be a better uh, help help the, the medical diagnostic diagnostic team put together mm -hmm. the pieces of the puzzle because you're a part of that puzzle in uh, in the treatment. So it's crazy numbers like 20% right of all patients are misdiagnosed. Um, that's that's not good. And so we um, are going to be able to fine tune some of those skills. So this Very is more cool. clinical application kind mm -hmm. of topic. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Tracy, for coming on and talking. Looking very much forward to seeing you in September. Um, for those um, listeners that are wanting to catch you or maybe um, see and kind of check on some of the things that we already talked about today, but they can't wait till September. Do you have anywhere that they can go and um, keep tabs on you? Absolutely. A couple places. You are more than welcome to always email me to my own personal email, which is longforhome at gmail.com. That's my last name, Long, and it's F-O-R-H-O-M-E at gmail.com. That's our family motto. We have six kids, three girls, three boys, born girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy. Wow. And uh, that was what, yeah, that was the family motto we wanted our kids to know. So they'll mm. remember that email. So long for home mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Also, um, a company that I co-founded with my twin sister, which is lifelong learning education 
dot com. And so you can always uh, log on there, see some of the courses and the topics that I also offer and uh, throw me a little, you know, message or something there. And of course, I'm on LinkedIn. And of course, on Facebook by my own name. So love to hear and meet you uh, because you're my peeps. You're the kinds of people I love. Absolutely. And for those listeners, um, I will include all that in the show notes. So um, just look in the description or the intro and you can find all that information there. Um, And Dr. Tracy Long, we will be seeing you in Las Vegas this year in September. Hey, thanks for coming to my hometown. (laughs) See ya. (laughs) All right. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Travel Nursing and Allied Life. You can find the full show notes below or at TravCon.org. Please help us out by rating our podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. 